All right, so we talked a little bit about user groups very briefly. You know, Pamot kind of showed you the distribution of a user and the various components they can be assigned, right? Including the authorities, the organization, uh, user roles, the organization units, and then these, this uh, user groups. So now I kind of wanted to get into how we utilize those user groups. And actually there's a couple of ways we utilize them because one way is for the configuration on aspects like the metadata. And that's what we're going to kind of cover now. Um, but you know, those of you who are also interested in utilizing the data, for example, you might use these user groups for sharing of your maps and your dashboards and things of that nature as well. So sharing is, uh, this, this sharing concept is kind of multi-purpose. Um, but we're going to kind of focus on the administration side, in particular, as it relates to the tracker metadata that we have been working on. And we're also going to discuss how this links to a user role and a user, because it's kind of uh, a concept that, you know, there's kind of several layers to this, and it allows us to kind of give us this com complete, very distinct level of access to the user um, that we're looking at. Okay. So in this session, what we're going to do um, we're going to review the sharing concept. Okay, we're going to explain the link between sharing, user roles, and user groups. So, you know, we talked about it a little bit, but now we're going to kind of demonstrate it a bit more so you can kind of uh, see how it works in practice. Okay, we're going to describe the difference between metadata and data sharing. And this is something you came across a bit yesterday when you were working on your exercises, your, uh, your sorry, your graded assignments, as well as, you know, when we were going through the demo the, the day before. Okay, but now we're going to describe it in a bit more detail and, and kind of go over the implications of this for the various objects within our tracker program. Okay, we're going to talk about the different objects within a tracker program that can be shared. So some of you, for example, created your own tracked entity um, uh, type and you had some difficulty with your program accessing it after you'd done that. So we're going to go through the different objects and just kind of discuss, you know, what we can do with, with that on the configuration side. Okay. We're also going to describe this concept of program and program stage sharing. So actually some of you had raised this question the other day when we were doing the con final configuration on your access of your program. And we had in our example, assigned the same level of access to our programs as we did our program stages, right? But actually you don't have to do that. And we're gonna discuss that and, and show kind of what you can do if it's not always the same for different user types, okay? And then we're going to look at applying the program and program stage sharing settings to your own program. Now, some of this configuration aspect, we're gonna to leave till Monday, okay, due to time restrictions, right? So we're gonna kind of break it up into these natural kind of steps that, you know, there's a part one and part two, we'll cover part one today, and then, you know, I'll give you a little bit of a break for the weekend, and then we'll come back and discuss part two on Monday, I think, okay? So, Let's just discuss this um, in a little bit more detail, all right? So, so sharing itself, okay, um, and hopefully some of this is familiar to you, right? Because it's the same for aggregate da data. It's, uh, in, in particular, it's a very similar for event programs, right? When you're dealing with the metadata and data sharing. Um, and hopefully this word, at least in the DHIS2 realm space is somewhat familiar to you, okay? So sharing allows you to take specific items or objects in the system and determine the level of access the user has with these objects, okay? And we typically apply sharing to user groups or users in the system, okay? And, you know, typically it's user groups because doing it by user, you know, that can be quite cumbersome, right? If you want to apply the same sharing settings to 20 different people, you know, it's a little bit more efficient to manage this via a user group rather than try to do this via a user, right? Via managing, you know, adding 20 users for different sharing settings, right? And what we do is we combine this concept of sharing, okay? We combine this concept of sharing with then um, user authorities and user roles, which we've been discussing, okay? So we combine these two aspects and you'll see later on, there's, a, there's another layer we will add, okay? Program access levels, okay? And this kind of allows us to be very specific in terms of what a, what a single person can do um, in the system with our data, with our metadata, okay? Right? So when we're looking at this, user roles can kind of be thought of as the top layer restriction on what a user can do in the system, okay? 
So we give, you know, PAM01 over this, you give them access to edit or modify certain metadata objects, perhaps, or access to particular apps, or allow them to say, okay, I can access the tracker data in a certain way, for example, viewing the event analysis um, data, right? But then um, we combine this with this second layer of sharing, and this more precisely restricts what a user role's function allows you to do with specific objects, right? So if I assign authority of view event analysis in a user role, via sharing, I will say, well, what programs can I access the data for, okay? So we'll, we'll cover this in more detail to give you some more concrete examples. Okay. In the context of a tracker program, the concept allows us to decide what type of access a user will have to the program itself, okay? Both for data entry purposes, as well as data analysis, right? So what we're doing is we're deciding, can the person enter, uh, create new tracked entity instances, for example, in, in you know, we've been using people uh, as an example in our antenatal care program and our TV program. So can a specific person create new people and register them and enroll them in our programs? Can someone view the data that we've entered? Can someone go into the program stages and edit the data, right? This is something that we can control via the sharing concept, right? So by program, we can have this specific setting. This is combined with that user role layer, okay? So let's look at it from that top view. Let's kind of visualize this again, just to kind of reinforce this a little bit, right? So we have this top layer restriction, which is user roles, right? And this gives us access to our apps or our metadata uh, or to kind of modify or edit metadata, okay? But then we have that second layer within those apps. You know, what do we have access to, okay? And that's controlled via sharing, right? So I can say, okay, I have access to maintenance. I'm an, I'm an administrator of some kind, um, but I only have access to modify these programs or you know, program A, B, and, and F. And I only have access to modify these data elements, right? Just because I have access to maintenance doesn't mean I have the right to modify everything necessarily, right? It could be the case, but it's, this is kind of where we're going with the sharing concept. The same thing is true in tracker capture. People have access to enter data in tracker capture, but which programs do they have access to, right? It might be that you only want people from the immunization program to be able to enter new records into that program, right? And then other users from other programs, maybe they can see the data or maybe they can't see the program at all, right? And that's all controlled via sharing. So we have these two layers that are working together to define what a user can access, okay? So then we have these two levels of sharing and we've kind of come across them, right? But in the context of tracker programs, we haven't really discussed the implication so much, but it's very similar. For example, if you've dealt with event programs, right? Then, then the implications here are very similar. But now, you know, we can get into a little bit more detail because we have multiple program stages, we have the program itself. We have this concept of a tracked entity, right? The person in, in our case, in our examples that we're using. And, and we can apply these, these settings to each of these layers in our program configuration, all right? So when we look at metadata sharing and data sharing, they have separate sh sharing settings, but you know they kind of imitate each other in a way, right? So metadata sharing, we have this can edit and view and can view only, right? So if you remember, if you, you know, went to share your program, right, and, and you would apply the sharing settings, you would see these two options, right? Then we have this next level data sharing. There's can capture and view and can view only. Of course, there's that other level, no access. That is pretty self-explanatory, right? If you say you can't access it, then, you know, they can't see anything, right? But then these are the two that allow specific permissions to occur, right? On the metadata side, if we say can edit and view, this means that they can both view and modify a metadata item, right? This is typically reserved for administrators of the system, right? A very few people would probably have the authority to say, modify your program configuration, right? Or modify the data elements that exist in your system. But if we say can view, then this means they can, they can view the, the metadata object. And anyone who's going to interact with that item needs to have some level of can view access, right? So even if they're just entering data in tracker capture, they need metadata can view access in order to see that metadata, 
Okay. On the second side, we have data sharing, and we have these two items, can capture and view, and can view only, right? Can capture and view, this means that they can enter data, enter some kind of data, right? So if I apply this to a program, for example, then I'm saying, you know, you can, you can actually enter some data into the program itself. If I apply it to a program stage, I'm saying you can enter data within the program stage. Okay? If I say they can only view the data, then this means, you know, if I, we can use the program stage as another example, right? This means I can only view the data in that stage, but I can actually modify, edit, or enter new data within that particular program stage, right? So this applies both to analysis users, as well as, you know, someone who might have access to tracker capture and wants to view the records, right? If they go to view a record and they only have can view access, they won't be able to edit any of the data that is there, as an example, right? And we'll go through some actual demos so you can see it in practice, all right? But hopefully that's a bit of a, a, a summary, you know, that, you know, at this stage you would have had previous exposure and then exposure over the past couple of days to these concepts, right? But this is kind of how it's applied in, in, in practice, right? So what are the objects that we can apply sharing to? Well, for metadata, there's quite a few objects and we're not gonna go through all of this. We're gonna focus on the particular items within the tracker model, but in a, in a live system, you know, there's quite a few objects you can apply this metadata sharing to, right? So we have these two levels, we're looking at the, the metadata part here, right, first. So here, um, what we're saying is that these are the objects we can apply this metadata to. All the data elements, the tracked entity attributes, option sets, tracked entity types, our programs, our program stages, and we haven't gotten to it yet, but also our program indicators, all right? And basically we can decide who can see them, who can modify them, you know, who can do what with these various, with these various items, okay? On the data sharing side, in a tracker program, there are three objects we can apply data sharing settings to. You can see this list is different than the previous list, okay? Um, it's a, just a subset of those items. And, and these are the three that we're going to focus on mainly, okay? Tracked entity types, okay, which some of you had made, and then you had some problems accessing your program, and we'll discuss why, okay? Programs and the program stages. And we had all of you apply sharing settings to your program and your program stages at, at minimum, right? If you were using the tracked entity type we created for you, for example, okay? But we're gonna discuss this in a bit more detail in terms of how you can differ the sharing settings um, for this, depending on what you want someone to do. All right, so let's look at an example of this in practice, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're going to look, and I'm, I'm doing this on the demo system, Okay, and you'll have an exercise after I do it. So if you kind of um, might be better just to watch the implications of this a bit so you can keep up um, and then you can perform it on your own, okay? So let's look at these users and see how it differs a bit from our kind of normal configuration, okay? So in this scenario, I have three users. I have a case registration user. And what I'm saying is this user can only register new patients and they can view program data. Right? So they'll be able to enter in tracked entity attribute data, but they won't be able to actually add, enter any program data. So this differs from the configuration we've been looking at the other days where we've just been assigning the same sharing settings to the program and the program stages, all right? Then I have a, a, what I call an ANC staff user, okay? And this user can view and edit the data in the program after registration, okay? But they can't register a new user, or, or sorry, a new person, new mother, okay? I have an ANC manager as well, and this person can only view the data. They can't edit the data. Um, they can't register new, new mothers either, okay? So this is a bit different in terms of, you know, what we've been discussing previously, all right? And this relates to this program stage sharing concept, which we will eventually get to the configuration component um, of this, all right? So just... Log in. Okay, so I'm going to log in as a user who has this access. Okay. So 
Zeit. Okay, so this is the user that I'm currently working on, okay? Maybe that's a bit small. So I'll sign in with this user. And as I mentioned, this user that I'm looking at, they can just register individuals and view the data within the program. So the, the way you can think about this workflow is if you know you were in a in a hospital perhaps or in a clinic, right? And you had someone kind of as, as people come in registering them, right? And then the, the actual staff members, when they're there, they would retrieve that record and enter the details as they perform their assessment and provide treatment, right? This might be more um, reflective of a workflow where you're entering data in real time than you would be entering data maybe retrospectively, okay? So I can go to Tracker Capture. Select an organization unit. And you can see this person, they have access to register a new person, right? So I'll go ahead and I'll register a person. Okay, and I'll just continue. And you'll see that the ANC visit is there. Okay, this person should not have access to this. Um, just let me double check what's going on here. One second. Okay. Okay, um, so I'll fix it on the other system too um, before you start your exercises. So um, I'm going to go through that process again. And just what can happen. This user is only supposed to have access to register individuals and not edit data in the stages. As you can see, when I showed the other example, um, when I logged in and when I created that person, they were still able to edit the program data. Um, that's because someone had altered the user groups of this user, um, and and that's kind of what we're talking about right now. So let's just go through this so you can actually see it work. Um, practice here. Okay, so what happens when I log in with this user? Um, they're not able to enter any data. So when I try to enter a stage or create a new stage, it won't allow me to because it's basically saying you don't have access to do this. You cannot write any data to the program stages. The same will be true if I view any existing record. So for example, we have these existing records here. Um, so if I maybe open one here, uh, let's see. Okay, you can see here I can't edit. This one already has an existing program stage, but I can't edit any of the fields, right? If there was data here, I could view it. You know, like for example, here in the second part, there is data. I can view it, but I cannot alter any of the data values. All right. And this is because of the way that the sharing has been applied um, to this particular user. Okay. So they cannot actually modify any of the data within this, though they could register a person, right? Um, you can see that the person who registered some, they do have some other permissions though that are interesting, right? Because they can delete the enrollment and they can also delete the person, right? Because they registered the person and by nature of doing so, they also have the authority to delete the person, right? So it's not as intuitive as it could be because you might not want this to be the case necessarily, right? But right now, that's that's kind of how it works. So it is a bit of a limitation, all right? But in order to kind of edit this data, because this person, their role is just kind of, as people come into the clinic, they register them, and, and then their, their job is done, right? So the next kind of level of this, okay, let's 
Okay, is to actually then have a user who can, you know, modify the data within those program stages. So if I go here, so the first thing you'll notice when I select the org unit and then the program appears, then this person does not have the register button, okay? Because they can't register new mothers into the program. So the first user that we logged in with, they could register people into the program, right? As part of their workflow, right? So we have to give explicit permission based on the sharing settings that we provide to the program, okay? In order to allow people to be registered into the program itself, right? And unless we do that, you know, then, then they won't be able to do so. In this workflow, this person expects that the person they're looking for, the mother they're working with, already exists. So they would maybe search for them or find them from the list and, and update their record, okay? So I believe, I, I'm not sure which one I'm access. Well, let's access this one, okay? Um, so you can see here for this user, okay? They can enter data, right? They can uh, modify all the fields. If they go here, they can add events. If I wanna add more events, doesn't give them any error of any kind, right? They can just do what they need to do, but they don't have any authority to register new individuals, right? And that's kind of just how it's been set up, right? So this can be the case. It doesn't have to always be the case. It's just one way to configure things, just to give you an idea of kind of what can be the case based on different configurations, all right? But this person has complete access to add new data, right, for the program. And, and that kind of makes sense. Um, in the case that you know they're the ones providing the service, right? If they're the ANC staff member, they're providing the service and they want to update this in real time as they take these measurements or perhaps provide um, various um, you know methods of prophylaxis or whatever it is that they're doing during the encounter, right? They can update this in real time, just save the record and then go to the next one, right? Assuming that that person's record has already been entered um, into the system. Now you don't have to be so restrictive, right? You could allow this person to register perhaps, um, if that was part of your workflow, right? As we saw before, we can give that authority to others. Okay. And what we're going to do this corner here. We can also we, we also had one more user in that workflow. Okay, this was an ANC manager, and what we basically said is this person can't enter any data at all. Okay, they can view the records, but I don't want them to modify anything. The whole idea being that if they find some kind of quality issue, they would have to call the facility perhaps, or speak to the person who entered the record and understand you know, what needs to be modified rather than them going in and making a modification without really understanding the scenario properly. So if I go to one of the records, you'll see just like our first user that we logged in with, they cannot enter any data, right? They can view the data that's here, but they can't interact with any of the fields, okay? And similarly, they can't register anybody, right? And if I were to go to event reports or something like that, this person has access to the analysis apps, then I could also view the data there, but they can't edit any of the information, right? So depending on the level of uh, kind of interaction you want a person to have um, in the program, you know, this kind of configuration will allow you to control this quite specifically. And it doesn't mean you have to have, you know, we have quite different user types um, spread out this way. Um, and, but that was just kind of done for demonstration purposes. And, and maybe if you're dealing with data retrospectively, it's not, um, you know, as valid perhaps, or is not as useful to think about things this way. We will go through an alternative configuration as well. Um, but when you're looking at this, you know, it just gives you some idea as to, you know, what can be done, right? The different sharing settings that control this, we will discuss, you know, how it's actually configured, of course, but by providing these different levels of access, you can see there's different interactions within the program itself, right? Allowing certain people to register individuals, allowing certain people to interact with the program stages, allowing people just to view the data. And of course, you know, there's that none level of access where um, maybe I don't see other programs, right? So, you know, I have a list here and this person sees the other programs, but we could hide them from this user, right? So they just have access to the antenatal care program as an example, right? So it's kind of completely dependent on, on what it is um, that you want to do, all right? So, okay, so um, just open the, up the exercise here. 
So it's just located in the sharing and user groups um, section, okay. And it's the learner's guide to sharing part one. So what I'd like you to do is work on the first exercise, exercise one. Okay, and exercise one is just going to have you log in as some of these different user types. So you can see in practice kind of, you know, how this works, right? So anytime you log in as a new user, um, you know, you guys uh, right now on that demo system, so you'll, you'll be using the demo, demo system, okay, um, for this. Don't, don't use the customization one. This is not configured there, okay? But because you guys are, you guys are basically admins now on that demo system, right? Because you guys have access to all kinds of stuff um, that a normal user wouldn't typically have. So what I recommend is each time you log in, so if I, if I log in, let's say as the first user, um, just clear your cache before you go to tracker capture, okay? Um, so you go to go here, clear your cache, and then you can proceed to tracker capture. So you'll be logging in as these three different users. Each time you log in as a new one, just clear your cache and then proceed with the instructions. All right, I think it'll help kind of control some of these problems that we've been seeing. Okay, so we'll give about uh, maybe 10 minutes um, to work through that exercise um, and then we'll come back, okay? Okay, so in this scenario, right? In the last scenario, we had all this different sharing permissions, right? Someone registered the person, Someone then subsequently could go in and enter data in the program stages. Another person could just view the data, but not really enter any new data or register new people, right? But this is a more traditional, I wanna say, configuration or a more traditional way to look at it, right? And that's why I wanted to go over it. Because also anyone of you who's familiar with our uh, packages, our, our metadata packages concept, these are the typical user groups we apply to the package at the beginning. When you implement it in country, it might change, but a lot of countries tend to kind of use this at, at a minimum, right? And it's a good kind of idea just to understand um, what this looks like. All right, so in this configuration, um, we have three types of users, right? We have a data capture user, and this person can enter and view data in the program. And this includes being able to add new people to the program, okay? As well as interact and add new data within the program stages, right? In the previous example, we had separated this authority out, okay? But in this one, they're, they're one and the same, okay? We also have a data analysis user group, and this means that the person can analyze data. They can view data for the program, okay? And the last one is an admin or maintenance type of group, right? And what this means, the difference here is that this person can edit the metadata, right? This is typically only assigned to a very small group of users, right? But it is often important, right? You need people that are managing this in case there are any problems with the configuration and it needs to be modified, all right? So I'm just gonna demo these real quick. You know, I, I, I'm cognizant of the time, all right? And then we'll, we'll break for today, but just so you can kind of see this more traditional configuration, all right? And here, if I go back to the demo system, so I'm still doing this on the demo system, okay? I'm changed, but I'll first log in as my data capture user, right? This person who can register people and interact with various elements of the program stages as well, right? So I'll go here, just access uh, organization, let's say, let's find a district hospital. Okay, and I, I'm, I'm going to work with the TV program in this example, okay? So this person, okay, they can register people as we can see, right? Um, enter some details quickly. You can also see now they can modify the data within the program stages, right? And this is very common, right? A very common configuration, very common way to make things, right? They can enter data here um, for this person. Okay. And it all gets saved, right? And they can also do it for the other stages. It's not separated by stage or anything like that either. Um, so that's a very common way that you can, you know, you will see data entry users kind of, you know, interact with the program, right? I log out here. Okay, we also have a traditional 
uh, analysis user, right? Which is kind of similar to that ANC manager in a way, right? And you know, this person will have access to analyze data, and you could give similar access to the the TV data entry person through their user role, actually, right? If they can capture data, they can absolutely view the data, right? So you have to remember that, right? Um, but this person here, if they go to capture and let's just go back, select a hospital here. And, and you can see here, uh, oh, okay, I guess this has also been changed. This person should only be able to analyze data. I apologize that the configuration um, keeps getting modified, but let's go to the admin user anyway. At least so you can see, hopefully this one has not been modified. Um, this user you can see has access to more. Okay, you'll see that immediately. You have access to maintenance. If I go to maintenance, the other users didn't have access to this, right? I go to my program here. Um, they have access to this program, right? They, they can go on the program maintenance and, and make modifications, okay? So this is a more traditional way, I guess, to separate out authority, having an analysis and entry and an admin user that can kind of work with the whole program, um, but have different roles in working with that program. And you can combine settings, you know, for, for more than one person. There's no reason, for example, for the capture user not to also be able to analyze data because their sharing setting will allow for that, right? They have a can capture and view setting applied to them, which means they can view the data and also enter new data, right? The data analysis user will be a bit more restricted. They shouldn't be able to capture data. Unfortunately, um, I'll just have to double check what happened um, with this, uh, who modified this and, and make the change here. Okay, and then you have another user, which is the admin user, which is you know just a small subset of people. And that's the user I'm logged in now. And we can see that they can, you know, they can interact with the program metadata. Right for this TV program, they can make modifications. If I change the name, you know, save this. No. Okay, well, I'm not going to do it now. But uh, you know, I could I could change the name or alter some of the program stages or something. Right, I could make these modifications if I needed to. You can see they have access to go in here and do that, whereas the other users did not. Right, so if I log into the one that I know it's working at least. They don't even have access to maintenance, right? So they can't do anything to alter the metadata, right? At this point in time. And that's through a combination, remember? They, they get access to maintenance via the user role. They get access to modify the metadata or, or specific parts of metadata through sharing, okay? But we've just blocked it off in both ways for this user, okay? So the whole point that I'm kind of trying to get to is that there are multiple ways to apply program state sharing, right? So we saw an example before where we kind of separated out into these three very specific roles, registering users, interacting with the program data, just viewing the data. And then, you know, this is a more traditional perhaps way, um, if you want to refer to it that way, of, you know, also um, setting this up. But you could also think about another more non-traditional way, and that is specific program stages. So for example, let's say you're dealing with a surveillance program. You know, this is a good one, right? Because then you have people from the lab who might have to enter lab data, and you might not want others messing around with that. You have people performing the clinical examination. You have people maybe going out into the field and performing an investigation. And there are different groups of users interacting um, with that at any given time. So you can also set up you know, specific access to different program stages. In both the examples we showed, you know, the person who could modify the data in the program stages, it was true for all of the program stages, right? But applying this more broadly, you could generalize this, right? And then apply specific settings to each individual stage, all right? So, you know, I'm, I'm, we, there's many different permutations, combinations, you know, of this. I've gone through two, right? Just to kind of show the potential um, and how it can be traditionally configured. Um, but, you know, there are other ways you can do this as well, okay? Um, so we haven't actually got into the configuration. We've just been kind of discussing the implications and how it looks um, on the user facing side. Okay, so these three users are also set up. I have to fix the TV analysis one. I'll just go check and, and, and uh, see what's happened there. Um, but you can try the TV entry one and the admin one at least um, um, when you have a moment, all right? So, so we're reaching the end of our, our time today. Okay, so 
Um, that's why I'm not going into the configuration session because um, that's a whole whole other session and I don't want to keep you um, over time, especially on a Friday. Okay. So, um, but, you know, if there are any questions or anything, I'll stick around, of course, um, uh, on Slack and, and you can ask me that. And you can give the exercise a try if you, you have a little time um, as well, just looking at the different things. But it's very similar, just kind of showing the different properties of these users as you log in. All right. And the exercise I'm referring to um, is within the learner's guide. And this is exercise two. Okay, exercise two. Right. And it gives you all the details of all the logins. And I'll just make sure to update that analysis one. Okay. So if you're kind of struggling once again where to find this stuff, it's all on Moodle. It's in um, into these divided into the sections. Okay. And this this one is sharing in user groups, and you can find the learner's guide there. Um, there's also some links in the chat, I know, directly to the material. Okay. But we've gone through a lot this week. Okay. Hopefully you've had a chance to interact with a number of different things today related to users, user roles. Um, and now um, sharing, okay? We will show you how to configure these sharing settings on Monday. So I'm gonna modify the agenda a little bit just to you know, account for this uh, and make sure there's enough breathing room for all these different topics, okay? So we're not rushing through them, all right? Um, but uh, yeah, if you have a moment, you can um, complete this exercise, non-graded exercise once again, just to give you the opportunity to see what the configuration looks like, um, you know, how, it's, how the configuration affects these users, okay? Um, Once again, um, there is feedback. Uh, if you can fill that out, um, we would appreciate it. We haven't been getting much feedback, so it's kind of, you know, on the online environment in particular, it's kind of hard for us to gauge um, where people are at, um, you know, and if, if there's difficulty with certain things or, you know, certain things we could improve upon, um, especially. So we would really appreciate you letting us know. Hopefully now that you've gone through a couple more topics, um, maybe you have a better sense of kind of, you know, where there are areas we could theoretically improve upon. All right, um, but yeah, um, I will end the session for now. I don't wanna keep you late on a Friday, any later than I have, especially for participants in Asia and other regions where it's already quite late. Um, so thank you very much for your time. We'll come back on, on Monday and we'll continue with sharing. We'll be looking at you know, how to configure the various things that I've shown you today and, and you know, continuing with this kind of access control um, in the program access level session as well, all right? So thank you everyone for your time. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll meet back up on, on Monday, same time.